All right, folks, it's June 9th, 2023, and the crypto shutdown is here. We know of one little precious asset that's about to break away with clarity from the rest of the space. You may know which crypto asset that I'm talking about. But before we get into the full update, I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to join us in the investment community. That would be our private Discord group because we're going to be having a real estate call tomorrow. So normally on Saturdays, I host our weekly calls myself, give my update that's exclusive to the community. But tomorrow, we're going to be having my good friend Johnny, who's a veteran in the real estate asset class and getting deals done while we see the chaos hitting the real estate market as well. Our good friend Johnny's going to break it down for us, and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions uh, after his presentation tomorrow as well. So you have less than 24 hours. That's at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every Saturday, we do our weekly calls and tomorrow's going to be the real estate call. The following week, we're going to be having our Discord meetup. So it's going down in the Discord. If you guys are looking to take advantage of that, head on over to my website at zachrector.com. You sign up for the Patreon, and that's how you get access to the Discord group. We would love to have you there. Now, I appreciate all of you guys for joining me in today's update. We're going to cover it, cryptocurrency, current events, and the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. We're watching XRP right now, taking a look at the sticks. It has started to move back down as I was getting ready to fire up this stream. We were above 53 cents. Now we're, now we're dipping down slightly, getting a little red candle here on the four hour chart, but we're seeing this structure built above 50 cents, looking strong, looking good, but we know that there is a lot of chaos hitting the market, so let's stay prepared, okay? But as we talked about, XRP ready to decouple from the rest of the space can happen at any point in time, and I know how much XRP I needed to be able to sleep soundly at night. I don't know what that number is for you. I'm not here to give you financial advice, but the setup is incredible. Now let's get right on to it, folks. Current events here to start us off. Uh, let me pull my source here. Sorry, I apologize, guys. Let's pull this. There we go. Robert Kiyosaki to start us off. If Biden's DOJ can do this to a former U.S. president, what can they do to you or me? What happened to Hunter Biden's laptop? Isn't that fascism? Good news. Biden crime family turning Trump into national hero. Americans will choose freedom, not fascism. Now, what are we talking about? Robert Kiyosaki is alluding to the fact that former President Trump is apparently going to be indicted for his handling of classified material. So his reaction. Well, let's see what Trump's up to. Looks like he's hitting the links today. OK, so we're watching this situation take place. Uh, former President Donald Trump. Hitting the links, swings looking pretty solid there, and uh, putting it on the green, that's good. But this is uh, the chaos inside of this country that's going to continue. Because you look on the other side of the aisle, and the political theater is being played out on both sides. Check it out. Revealed, bombshell FBI document alleges 5 million bribe paid to Joe Biden by Burisma Exec. Now recall that Burisma is the company that Hunter Biden actually went in and was on their board as an advisor. Uh, he had no experience, but uh, obviously he must have played some sort of role in his position as an advisor to that company. But the allegation here is that a $5 million bribe was paid to Mr. Joe Biden. So uh, you guys know how it works. You got to pay to play. And in reaction, response, Biden is asked about the damning evidence in the FD1023 document and what he sold uh, and, and that he sold out the country. Now, here is his response. Let's listen in here, folks. The bribery allegation, Congresswoman Nancy May says there's damning evidence in the FBI file that he sold out the country. Do you have a response to the congressional Republicans? Where's the money? I'm joking. Mr. President, 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 what are you it's a joke, folks. It's a joke. It's a bunch of malarkey. Where's the money? Um, and so we're just going to continue to watch this unfold, right? Both sides of the aisle have sold us out. Uh, complete corruption all the way to the very top. And you guys know where I stand. It's just very simple. If you're moving humanity forward, if you're giving... Uh, Americans an opportunity to prosper with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then I'm a fan. I will support you. If you've turned against the American people, if you've received bribes from other entities to basically sell out this country, well, that's criminal, and we're going to have to hold you accountable. As far as, you know, with Trump, well, let's let all truth be revealed. On both sides of the aisle, I just say, let all truth be revealed. If Trump's a criminal, okay, sure. If Mr. Biden has done some crimes against humanity, well, let's check it out, and let's hold him accountable. But with that being said, folks, I want you guys to understand that as this internal chaos continues to take place in the United States, this is going to keep most of the masses distracted from the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. That's why they're not going to partake. Uh, or they should say they will participate. Everyone does get to participate, and you will get a participation trophy 
for the greatest transfer of wealth in world history, but it doesn't mean you're going to be on the right side of the transfer. So every time I share Trump, share Biden, talk about the political aspects and the current events, I get all these people to get emotionally triggered and this and that. And I just want to, you know, reiterate the point. I'm not here to have Trump save the day for me or my family or my business. I'm not here to lose sleep at night over the fact that Biden has sold out our country. I already know that, right? So it's up to me to call this out, use my platform to uh, ask for accountability. But then on a daily basis, I continue to build out my businesses regardless of who was president. In my opinion, Trump comes back and we're, you know, he's going to fulfill uh, what, what he set out to do when he got started. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean that I'm uh, for him or against him. I love him or I hate him. He's just a man playing his role. For me, my role is to make sure that I take care of my family, take care of my business, and not get emotionally triggered by politics, and I would encourage others to do the same. Because we just asked the question, it's very simple, how's your program working out? For those that get triggered when I talk about Trump, for those that get triggered because I'm talking about, you know, it's funny because one of the comments said, you're really showing your true colors. And I'm just thinking, wow, showing my true colors for talking about selling out our country. Yeah, I am showing my true colors. I really do stand for calling this out. I really don't stand for that. You know, and so if, if that's showing my true colors, yes, I do wear it on my sleeve how I feel about this stuff. I'm not scared to talk about it because I can't be canceled. OK, that's the problem. And nobody can get me on anything because I'm just a regular guy running my businesses and I stand for opportunity for Americans. I want to uh, I want a future for my children. It's very simple. And when we have elected officials that we have shown have sold us out. And the, the allegation here for the $5 million bribe is one of many. And, and, and the bribes that he took is the least of my concerns on what Mr. Biden and his criminal family did against the American people and against humanity. It's the least of my worries. The bribes is the least of it. Best case scenario for them, that's the worst that they did. But we know that not to be true. And so, like I said, uh, showing my true colors. Yeah, I'm an American. I want opportunity for our children. I don't stand for this corruption. Yeah true you got me you know and if that offends somebody if that turns somebody off i don't care i ask the question how's your program working out getting offended how does that work out it doesn't pay your bills it doesn't cut a damn check does it so with that being said let all truth be revealed and we'll see who we need to hold accountable right okay <laughs> uh now we continue on this is what i'm talking about this is why i get riled up <laughs> No matter who you love, who you support, or what you believe in, we cannot afford to send another $2 billion to Ukraine. We can't do it. But they continue. And so, like I said, when they signed this debt limit deal for no cap on the deficit debt limit for the next two and, two and a half, or year and a half, I basically said that they're going to send this thing. The agenda is moving full force for the next year and a half, and this is going to be the death of the dollar and the markets when they were pumping. I said, people have no idea what this means for our future over the next year and a half. They are going to run this country into the ground. You guys are seeing, and, and I put out a tweet here earlier. I said, when you realize that our enemy will literally set the earth on fire to get their agenda through, it changes your perspective. And yeah, it does get you a little riled up. When you understand that they're willing to go to these extreme lengths to win, to get their agenda through, you're not just playing a regular game here of, of politics, of I got some policies I'd like to implement and you got some policies you'd like to implement. They're setting the earth on fire. That's the length that they're willing to go. But the folks that want to say that we need to send money here and there, I just continue to say, we are broke, we are bust, we can't send money anywhere. Not to you, not to me, not to any country. We are bankrupt bust and we have to reset this thing. And what's getting set up here is going to be the greatest real estate crash ever. Like Robert Kiyosaki says, 2008 was a great financial crisis. 2023 will make the 2008 great financial crisis look like nothing. In 2019, office towers in San Francisco were hot. In 2023, the same buildings have lost 70% of value. What will woke cities do with the office buildings? Homes for the homeless. Get gold, silver, Bitcoin. I'll skip out on the Bitcoin, but thank you, Robert, for calling it like it is. And that's why we have a huge amount of respect for Robert uh, in his later years here. He's just letting it fly. He doesn't care anymore. And this is why we're going to be having the real estate call tomorrow is so that we can be tapped in on all of the asset classes, in particular real estate playing a role. For me, I got my barbell portfolio, right? I got one side that's conservative and one side that's risky. 
I, I put kind of crypto into the risk part of that, right? Where real estate's going to be on the conservative side of my portfolio. I'm not gambling on speculating high flying markets. The way that we're going to move into real estate is going to be very strategic. It's going to be about cash flow and it's going to be about maximizing our returns for our community as we invest together. Um, the reason why I want to invest together with my community is so that we can go buy more and, and bigger assets. That's the uh, the goal there with that. But I'm really looking forward to this, folks. This is going to be the sale of a lifetime, not just for real estate, but you're starting to see it hit. Um, you're starting to see more like, uh, and if you just go out and you look in the streets, you go around to go garage sales, you look at Craigslist, you look at Facebook Marketplace, you're starting to see higher price, um, not higher price, but higher valued items starting to hit the markets, right? I, I was trying to garage sale last year, but it was mostly all crap. Like there, people had no reason to sell their good stuff. Now you're starting to see some higher quality stuff, some higher quality items, vehicles starting to hit, uh, camper trailers. You're, you're starting to see all this, and this is all part of the sale of a lifetime, but it does lead back to the overall real estate asset class as well. For someone like myself, who's gonna be a first time home buyer, absolutely looking to, to, to prepare to move in on a property here this year. And then we're going to start building out the real estate portfolio and we're going to just start accumulating assets left and right. Now we continue on. Let's get into the crypto news, guys. Here we go. So Binance US is suspending the acceptance of US dollar deposits. They also warned customers that their banking partners were preparing to pause US dollar withdrawals as soon as June 13th. Here we go. So folks, this is the crypto shutdown that I'm talking about. While the rest of the space is panicking, while all of the exchanges are shutting down, the timing of this coming all together with the conclusion of the Ripple XRP lawsuit is absolutely massive. Now we get this news here today. 2011 hackers of more than 600,000 Bitcoin from the Mt. Gox exchange have been identified according to a DOJ indictment. So apparently they have found out who the hackers of the Mt. Gox Bitcoin were. And that's another thing to watch out for is that the Mt. Gox Bitcoin is being released, right? And uh, that, that's going to continue with the downward pressure on Bitcoin and others. But the problem right now is that the on-ramps and the off-ramps are getting cut off. Binance US, just one of many, I believe, that are about to get shut off. So please prepare accordingly. Now, we, we see this narrative starting to fall apart here. Digital Asset Investor shares this. Finally, they're saying it, but it's not Bitcoin and it never was. Remember, guys like him are the same ones that have been shouting Bitcoin and Ethereum for years. Why is he just now admitting he's known this all along? And so this is Rao Paul. He's on Tim Bellew's Impact Theory. And you're going you're gonna to hear Rao say that he thinks that the United States government and the UK government are the creators of Bitcoin. So let's take a listen in on this. And you have to ask the question, Digital Asset Investor says, why is he just now admitting he's known this all along? Let's take a listen. Tell me more. I said, and I think the US government and the UK government invented it, which is the NSA and the GCHQ in the UK, who are the two world centers of cryptography. Because the, even how the, the white paper is written, it's you think this transatlantic. Yes, I always have. And I asked the Department of Defense. They said, "Yeah, we've considered that too." Hold up. So he says he always has believed this. So why are you just now coming out about this? Right? Reminds me of the comments from my mentor Dan Pena when he said, "When you figured out, or when you find out who created Bitcoin." you would run as fast as you effing could to sell it. That's what he said. Uh, and so why is it that now we're starting to see this narrative flip, we're starting to see it get exposed as we have covered from the Twitter Sleuths, Digital Asset Investor and others, the DHS knew who the four Satoshis were. They knew of this group and whether or not it was you know, members of the NSA that went rogue, whether it was a government funded operation from the very beginning, uh, you, you know, people have watched the clips of my mentor Dan Pena saying that it could be Russia, it could be China. What what is for sure for me is that it was not just one random dude living in his basement that created this thing. The other thing that we understand is that if they've known who's been behind this for years, it's just like with the Ethereum free pass. It's just like with FTX. They are letting this thing go. And this could be one of the greatest psyops ever ran against the people. Really? I, I mean, it really could because 
when you think about that, did they know who created Bitcoin? They allowed an Ethereum free pass and the token factory to get created there, which was a whole Ponzi scheme based off of the, the base layer was Ethereum, which they allowed through the free pass, right? And then now we're starting to see this narrative flip. Now they find out who the Mt. Gox hackers are. And now you're starting to see the U.S. exchanges get cut off from their ability to withdraw, right? This is the crypto shutdown. They, they prop this thing up. They let everyone participate. They let everyone get hyped. They let the, the Bitcoin bros run wild, right? And now they're coming in to just rug pull this whole space. And it's coming violently, right? And so as we've alluded to and why we've stayed away, I don't care to own Bitcoin because it's a relevant technology, but I have always felt like this is part of a bigger psyop that's being ran against us to get us. What's the point of all this? To get us to accept digital currencies for when they want to roll out the CBDCs, for when they want to uh, implement the final stages of their uh, digital control apparatus. That's my opinion. But let me let uh, Rao Paul finish his statements here. Let's check this out here. Let's let him finish. They see that it was official, or it was just people from that that went rogue. I don't think it's a necessarily a rogueness. I think like Google have like Google X, where they do tons of experiments. Right? They know that one of the esoteric risks for the entire Western system is the issue of money. So there's probably groups of people who are given things to try, and if you can see a new system, maybe they tried a hundred of these and just one succeeded. We don't know. But it would make sense because that's what they do, this kind of stuff. So one of these took off. And so I think it's always been, I don't think it's a coincidence it came out of the financial crisis. I don't think it's a coincidence that, that the halving cycle and all of this is all related. It is the solution, always, a whole, always has been the solution. You just can't go there tomorrow. Mm. So all you need to do is let it happen slowly and manage that transition, you'll be okay. There'll be times where it speeds up because we've got something bad going on and there's times when it slows down. But if you, and that's what I think the US government regulation is trying to do. They don't want to ban crypto, just slow this down. Because if all the deposits leave the banking system, it's game over. Mm. If they don't set up a way of collecting taxes because everybody's living in crypto land and they have to ask your honesty and what trades you've done, that's not going to work for them because they can't pay the bills. So I think it's, they're trying to catch up. Um, I think that the UK will have a CBDC. I think the Europeans will, it's all coming relatively soon, relatively soon, the next five years, three years, four years, and they'll feel more in control of the system that they've got because they need to pay them the interest payments. Tell me more. I said, and I think, now, don't you dare mention the Ethereum free pass and mention, you know, the fight that we've been putting up to uncover all of this corruption, right? Because we've been over the target with this. And just now you're starting to see these mainstream prominent figures within the Bitcoin and the broader crypto community start to come out and acknowledge the big elephant in the room that Ethereum is built off of a free pass criminal corrupt mafia granting them uh, the ability to basically unleash this token factory of all the Ethereum tokens. And then with Bitcoin, uh, he, he says that it's going to be the solution or part of. Um, I just don't see when when it, when is technology ever, you, you know, um, not updated. And, and like you said, you have folks that left the NSA, like David Schwartz, who worked on cryptography who worked on Bitcoin and then left to go create better, more sound cryptography with XRP, more efficient ledgers like XRP. So for Bitcoin to be the solution, I just don't see it happening, but hey, to each their own. And I will say that Bitcoin has the ability to continue to remain strong and run up based off the fact that people don't like being told not to do something. People don't like being told that you can't own Bitcoin. They, they, they get pissed off when Gary Gensler calls all of us fraudsters, and hucksters and so then we go in and we do what we're told not to do and then when the banking crisis hit you saw in march bitcoin started to go up you're seeing turbulence continue to hit we've talked about the trillion dollar bonds that are going to be hitting the market which is going to 
increase the potential for additional bank runs. And so this chaos can actually lead to Bitcoin run up long term over the next couple decades. I don't think that Bitcoin is the solution. I don't think that Bitcoin is the answer. But for those that are early investors in Bitcoin, I get why they keep this thing rolling and why they didn't acknowledge it years ago. But now years later, now that this thing's starting to get unraveled, now they're starting to say, oh yeah, all along I thought that the government created it. This was one of the main theses. I mean, it was that it was just some guy or some group of people that created this technology for humanity and that's why we got into it, right? This whole thing's getting flipped upside down. It's getting exposed and I think that you're going to see uh, many people Many people struggle to accept the truth here when it comes out in regards to Bitcoin, when it comes to the Ethereum free pass. It's funny, all of the space is freaking out and crying right now, but nobody wants to mention the Ethereum free pass, right? Nobody wants to acknowledge that Ripple is about to win and have clarity, right? It's all about, oh, woe is us. The SEC is bad for going after Binance. No, Binance was manipulating the market. I don't know about the fraud. I don't know if they were another FTX. That's yet to be seen. But what we do know is that they were manipulating the market. We covered it back in January. The massive minting at Paxos Treasury of Binance USD coincided, and like Rao Paul, I don't believe in coincidences either, when Paxos Treasury is minting a bunch of Binance USD and Bitcoin's going up, I don't think that's a coincidence. That's manipulation. And that's just part of it. And so people are mad at the SEC instead of being mad at CZ and Binance for trading against you, for getting your whole list of trades, the order book, and trading and dumping on you. That's what they were doing. Now, I'm mad at the SEC, and I'm also mad at these bad actors who have been manipulating this market for years. We need to get rid of both, right? It's, you know, and, and for me, Nobody wants to address the elephant in the room, which is the Ethereum free pass, which is that our government has known who created Bitcoin, which is that Ripple is about to win and defeat the SEC because we can't talk about XRP, right? It's a centralized poop coin, right? We can't talk about it and it has no utility, right? Well, folks are in for a surprise on that one. Now, as we continue here in the United States, we get a new uh, financial Dems and the financial committee are having a hearing next week. Financial Services Committee. Witness list for the full House Financial Services Committee is going to be taking place next Tuesday. First off, we got Jeremy Allaire, who is the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Circle. That's USDC coin. And then we get Coy Garrison, partner, Steptoe and Johnson LLP, and former counsel to Commissioner Hester Pierce. Amin Gun Sir, founder and CEO of Ava Labs. And then we get Thomas Sexton, the third president and CEO of NFA News. Now, of course, we are over the target and we will never stop until we get our level playing field. A huge shout out to our brother, Digital Asset Investor, already on top of it. He says, great news, Congress. Coy Garrison, one of your witnesses, was Bill Hinman, senior special counsel, starting May 2018, the month before the Ethereum free pass speech. He should be able to fill in any gaps the Hinman emails being released the day of your hearing don't cover. Talk about a bombshell. Talk about being over the target and Mr. Digital Asset Investor being absolutely relentless as we apply pressure to these folks that are supposed to be giving us a level playing field, supposed to be bringing some accountability. This is why they're going to be having the hearing next week, the same day that we're going to get the Hinman emails. So there should be plenty of room to have a conversation here that gets some answers out of these folks. And Coy Garrison, obviously part of the Ethereum free pass as he was a senior special counsel starting one month before the Ethereum free pass. Now that is very interesting. So huge shout out to DAI for covering that. Now folks, as I've been talking about, you're starting to see XRP hold its own. Does this mean that XRP is going to, to, to remain solid and is not going to go down if the rest of the crypto space does? No, we're not out of the weeds yet. We're not in the clear yet. We are about to have a breakthrough in this case, which could send it at any point in time. Nobody really knows, but what you're seeing is the resiliency of XRP and some of the other suppressed assets during this time. Take a look. Upholds covering it. They say XRP has been on the rise in the last month. Do you think this trend will continue? 53 cents, like I showed you guys with the sticks here. We are back down, but if you look at on the monthly time frame, we are up about 20% on the month. This is during all of this chaos, everything shutting down, and this is what we love to see right here, folks. The Zum Wallet, proud to announce the launch of a new on-ramp provider, Topper, Topper by Uphold. 
Topper enables smoother fiat to XRP on-ramping in a vast number of currencies. Discover more about Topper and its capabilities here. And so while we're seeing all of the exchanges, Binance US having to shut down withdrawals and deposits of US dollars, right? Now you're seeing additional on-ramps and off-ramps, fiat on-ramps coming to the XRP ledger. So this will give the people the ability to still access the XRP ledger, still get their XRP while all of these exchanges have already delisted XRP. But now these exchanges, they're not even going to be able to allow you to on, on ramp with your US dollar fiat currency. This is the perfect storm. We're about to flip this thing wide open. The XRP community has so much good coming our way. Just remember to stay strong right now. Next week is going to be absolutely massive as we get the him in emails. And at any point, we could be getting that ruling from the judge. And so who knows, right? People keep on asking me, is XRP going to dip lower? Is it going to do this? Is it going to do that? Honestly, I don't know. But I do know that it's remaining strong amidst all this chaos. And that we continue to see utility coming to the XRP ledger and additional liquidity. On ramps like this are absolutely massive. So a huge shout out to Uphold, huge shout out to uh, XRPL Labs, the creators of the Zum Wallet, for building out this utility, building out this access. While everybody else is getting shut down, everybody else is running for the hills, we continue to layer on that utility, layer on that liquidity, and it is just absolutely massive. We're about to be the first cryptocurrency through the door with complete regulatory clarity. This is absolutely massive, this opportunity here for the xrp community so you guys just be prepared i don't know what's going to happen if it's going to be tomorrow next week or next year but i will tell you this folks the utility is not stopping the partnerships with ripple you guys already know that are not stopping and so just take advantage of this opportunity while we still can you know i honestly for me it's like sometimes i just go buy xrp just to make sure i can still get it just to make sure that the exchanges still have it huge shout out to uphold you guys can go to my website zachrector.com and there's a link to access uphold if you already don't have an account with uphold they're one of the few exchanges that is still offering xrp i'm not uh, affiliated with them in any way but uh if you guys are looking to get some get some xrp while you still can I've been doing it just to make sure that we we still can get it, right? And I, I'm always surprised. I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is nice. I can still get some because you just don't know. And remember what we covered, how Alexa, and I don't I can't even explain this. Amazon Alexa said the XRP price wasn't going to be available after June 13th. So what does Amazon Alexa know? What inputs have been put into that AI system that tell it to spit out that answer that XRP price is not going to be available after June 13th? Folks, this is this is all hitting all at once. What an exciting time. But let's get in here, folks. We got a quick update on the precious metals before we exit this session. Comex Silver Vaults dropped 729,000 ounces. This was yesterday. Massive, massive withdrawal. 700,000 ounces. The day before it was 300,000 ounces. So just in the last two days, we see over a million ounces withdrawn from the Comex Silver Vaults. To add on to this, Newmont has announced a halt of operations at its Penasquito mine in Mexico. This is the largest silver mine in Mexico and the second largest in the world. Mexico is the largest producer of silver on the planet. So this is major. You're starting to see this. We covered in Peru how they were having a bunch of protests and chaos there. And that was one of the largest silver producers in the world as well. And so uh, this is getting very interesting here, folks, because you look at this. JC puts this in here. In 2022, Penasquito produced 29.7 million ounces of silver, which was 3.6% of the total global mine production. So we are seeing the setup here is as clear as can be with some of these uh, mining operations shutting down, countries like Peru getting hit with some turbulence and chaos there. This all affects the supply of silver when we know that last year there was already a 200 million ounce deficit. So let's take a look at this. In 2022, this mine produced 29 million ounces of silver, 3.6% of total global mine production. But the amount that they produced is 10% of the, uh, about 10% of the overall shortage that we had last year. That's how short we are. And you see mining operations like this shutting down or halting the impact that this is going to have, folks. And I know a lot of people say that they will never let silver go to these crazy prices because the cost of our iPhone would cost too much. It's simply a matter of the futures contracts getting exposed for what they are, which is just paper contracts that don't represent the actual metal. Once that gets 
uh, under control, we're going to find the real price of silver. I don't know if that's going to be $100 silver or if it's going to be $1,000 silver, but I don't believe that it's going to be a $20 per ounce silver. And you started to see silver actually went back up yesterday with gold as well. So the setup is as clear as day for me. And I just continue to pick up, you know, I just, I continue to pick up my metals. I got my 10 ounces. I got my one ounces. I give myself options along with cash on the sidelines, cash in the bank, multiple bank accounts, cash ready for real estate, got my crypto already. And 90% of my focus is on my business. How do we bring the money in so that we can take that fiat money and transfer it into these suppressed assets as fast as possible? <clears throat> Like I said, the reason why I got so much cash on the sidelines right now for real estate is to buy my first home. And in tomorrow's session with Johnny, we're going to be talking real estate update. I really would love to have you guys join us in the investment community. That's on my website, zachrector.com. Sign up for Patreon, get access to Discord group, and you can get in the call tomorrow morning, 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. We would love to have you guys in there as we take advantage of the greatest transfer wealth in world history. The real estate asset class, absolutely part of it. The setup in precious metals, clear as day. Head on over to my website if you guys are looking to get your 401k retirement account rolled over to precious metals and make an allocation there we can help facilitate that or if you want the metal shipped directly to you so that you can hold your shiny little rocks in your hand like me we can help facilitate that as well so head on over there it's all at my website zachrector.com on the way out if you guys could do me a massive favor let's smash it let's hit the notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one okay god bless you all